All right, well, welcome everyone to today's Process Optimization Academy session. Unfortunately, or fortunately, this is going to be our last session for 2022. We'll, we'll resume them in 2023, but just like a, a real academy, we're gonna take a nice little break for the holidays, but this is our 10th academy. So for those of you that this is maybe your first time, there's plenty of content out there for you to, to, to watch over the over the holidays. If you're you're interested in learning more about PO as you, you drink your eggnog and wait for Santa to come. So today's session, I think, will likely be a bit shorter, but it's definitely an important one. So when we're thinking and working towards creating a, a culture of accountability, action, and continual improvement, our, our process mining efforts need to move from these one-off science projects to just part of our routine within our organizations. And today we'll look at the scheduling, sharing, and collaboration capabilities that help make that a reality. Now, of course, we have to get the Academy logistics out of the way for our newcomers and those that have stumbled upon our recordings for the first time. So the purpose of these sessions are to help us all get better educated on ServiceNow's in-platform process mining capabilities. The brand name we give that solution is process optimization. We'll provide how-tos, practical guidance and use cases, product updates, and just in general, as a group, we'll share ideas and collaborate so we we'll all continue to get better. How these sessions typically work, we have a scheduled topic. Like I said today, we'll, we'll be talking about scheduling, sharing, collaborating. I think that content will take about 20 minutes today. Then we'll open it up for questions on that those topics, and then open it up for questions above and beyond the day's topics, sort of like an office hours. Um, these sessions are recorded and eventually posted to the community. Um, so if you you know you don't want to be uh, heard out loud on a recording in a community by hundreds, if not thousands of people, maybe just put your questions in the chat. Um, and then actually, that leads me to the next point. Finally, <laughs> feel free to post your questions in the Q and A section or the chat, and we do our best to answer those throughout the sessions. And when we don't, we follow up and post answers on the process optimization product hub on the community site. Um, or, like this one, we use it as a topic for a future session. Now, this is the slide, as you know, that says anything we say and do here today can't be held against us in the court of law. It's also the slide that says, hey, as part of these conversations, we very often talk about things that might be coming from a product perspective with process optimization, and you should take those as forward-looking statements um, and make no decisions based on them because they're always subject to change, and I'm assuming you've read the fine print. Um, for those that uh, are new here, just a brief introduction. My name is Dan Grady. I've been with ServiceNow for about six years now. I'm part of the outbound product management team for process optimization. Um, prior to taking this role, I've had roles with other, what we call now intelligence solutions like performance analytics, predictive intelligence, the virtual agent, anything that has to do with data analytics and the smarts on the platform, uh, I've, I've kind of been involved with in some way, shape or form. What we'll be doing today is, of course, we'll get a little bit of quick process mining one, 101 out of the way for the newcomers. Then we'll talk about just how do we make process mining a little bit more than just a science project uh, inside of our organizations. For many of us, uh, I've heard that it's like this thing that we're doing in a one-off way in the back corner somewhere. And we want to talk about, hey, what does it look like as we start to scale and mature when it comes to process mining? Then we'll talk about those scheduling, sharing, and collaboration uh, capabilities uh, that help enable that, that scaling effort. Um, as we start talking about getting more people involved, I thought it would be important just to touch a little bit on the roles that are uh, available with process optimization to help govern a little bit. Well, then demo, um, kind of the ability to schedule, compare versions, add notes, share a project, schedule a project, uh, show you some of that stuff in action. We'll get to your questions. We'll talk about how to get started after this session if, you, if you've not already gotten started with process optimization, and then we'll get to the available resources. All right. As always, the quick process mining 101. So with everything we do, there is a designed and desired path in our minds for, for how it should work and how things should play out. You know, whether that's planning an event like these academy sessions or maybe a family gathering around the Christmas times or participating in the World Cup or setting up a, a workflow. And when you design things, you design for efficiency as, as well as completeness to provide the best experience possible for everyone. Unfortunately, what we design isn't always what ends up happening in reality. And the reality is that not all work flowing through the process is going to take the optimal path. And that's going to have a negative impact on the experience that both employees requesting service have, as well as the people that are trying to provide 
that service, the ones that are working the process. Now, historically, identifying what is actually happening within our workflows and then improving them isn't always easy. What in-platform process mining or process optimization allows us to do is use the audit log data that is generated as records move through a given workflow on the ServiceNow platform to create a visual representation of what is actually happening within a given process. And this new level of visibility helps us accelerate our abilities to, to identify inefficiencies, non-conformant process activities, and improvement opportunities in general. Process mining gives us the ability to answer process questions that in the past have been really challenging for many of us to answer. So whereas traditional analytics will help us answer a lot of the what questions about our processes and workflows, process mining helps us answer the why. So things like, where is the process stuck? Where is rework happening? Where are tickets ping-ponging between groups? And where aren't we conforming to the process we've designed? My favorite one, you guys know this if you've been here before, is there's so many customers that have asked for over the years that this one question, and I've given it a name, I like to call it the finger pointing report there. Everyone seems to be looking for who's holding on to the tickets the longest. I need to know. Well, that is now something that we can answer with process optimization, all right? So all of these things are now going, these answers are going to be now a couple of clicks away uh, with process optimization. And we like to say that process optimization is going to give you the why behind all of your KPIs, whether it be a, a straightforward process like this, or maybe a little bit more involved, involved a workflow like a, maybe an HR lifecycle event or a request process that goes request, requested item and tasks uh, with the MDM capabilities that we have. All right, enough of the 101. Let's move to today's topic. So for those that have attended in the past, you know, we sometimes start with the Maya Angelou quote, do the best you can until you know better than when you know better, do better. Now, I came across this other quote from Winston Churchill. I've, I've been watching The Crown also, so this might have helped me find this one. And I thought it aligned nicely to the topic today. To improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. It's a, a really interesting quote, and I thought it aligned to how we should be thinking about process mining. When we first start on our process mining journey, it's usually a, a one-off exercise focused on a single process, maybe incident, change, HR case, customer service case. And admittedly, it's a, it's a little bit of a science project the first time we go out and we do this. Um, the good news is if you're doing a science project with process optimization, we're going to help you get to the insights in a matter of minutes rather than spending weeks on data extraction and preparation before you even can be, begin to look at a visualized process map. So on the platform, you, you quickly generate your process map, you spend some time to analyze the map and come up with some insights. Then typically there's a readout and everyone agrees that there is some significant opportunity identified and we should act and make some improvements. Now, from what I've seen so far, some time passes. I made that line a little bit longer between the insights and the action. Um, but to be fair, my lens is kind of skewed because of the speed at which we get to the insights uh, from a ServiceNow perspective. And this is where most organizations are today when it comes to their, their process mining efforts. But where we should all be striving towards and, and driving towards is a world where process mining becomes less of a science project and just part of our continual improvement routine. Make it part of the culture that we review these visualized process maps that show us the reality of what's going on in our workflows on a, on a regular basis. Not something we do once then throw away. If I, if I think about my kids' science projects, they, they spend a ton of time on them, actually, and my wife tends to help them a lot more than I do. And then as soon as they bring them home from school, they either get put in the basement or tossed in the trash. Process mining should not be like this, especially if we can automate the process of providing the insights on a regular basis and put it in the flow of the stakeholders' day-to-day -day lives. And in doing so, provide them the opportunity to change more often and get closer to Mr. Churchill's definition of, of perfect. Now, if we allow ourselves to dream for just a minute, and I know many of us are not here, but while many of us are, are focusing on that initial effort, like a, a single workflow, you've probably already recognized the value of process mining and, and what it can bring to your organization. Now, think of that value multiplied by all of the individual workflows within your organization, or even just the ones that are running on the ServiceNow platform. Think of a world in which you have a high-level CEO dashboard and functional dashboards for each of the different areas, workspaces for workflow stakeholders, and then visualize process maps for each of the supporting workflows. 
And from any level in the organization, you could get to the reality of what is going on and have a conversation about how to improve based on data, based on fact. Uh, yeah, I know that seems, it seems like a, a vision, but you know, as our CEO, Bill McDermott likes to say, we have to, we have to dream big. And, and this is a dream that we're making a reality here at ServiceNow. And since we are running a good portion of our workflows on the ServiceNow platform, just like many of you are, it, it's something that we believe you can make a reality as well. I think I've shared this, this screen before, but um, from our CEO and CIO level dashboards, anyone can navigate to an individual workflow and see the speed and productivity KPIs for that workflow, but they can also drill down to the visualized process map or any continual improvement initiatives that have been opened against that workflow. I'm gonna back to the point of putting things in the flow of putting these things in the flow of people's day-to-day -day helps create the culture of continual improvement and accountability here at ServiceNow. And I think many of your organizations are probably striving for that as well. All right, now, there are some process optimization capabilities that help enable what we're talking about here today. And um, we've talked about them briefly in prior sessions. Today, I wanted to focus on three areas or do a deeper dive in three areas that help make process optimization more part of the routine. Um, and these would be scheduling, sharing, and collaboration capabilities. So scheduling. You have the ability to schedule process optimization projects to mine on a recurring basis. So let's say you have a, a biweekly or a monthly process for review. You would set the model configuration uh, once you've got it down to the, the, the filter criteria that you want, and then it would mine on its own behind the scenes. Um, you're allowed to keep up to five versions of a model, so you can then ultimately do side-by-side -side comparisons to see how the process is evolving over time, very useful uh, experience to provide, and we'll look at this in the demo. Um, we use standard platform schedule jobs to do this, but we'll look at an example in the demo portion of where you would configure the schedule and how you would set it up. Sharing. So very often, there are more than one stakeholder that needs to get involved in the analysis. Uh, people who are involved in the process in different ways have different points of view. I um, mean, we need to, to share projects with others. So you have the ability to share projects and control what level of access people have, so whether they're just able to view it or if you want to give them the rights to edit the project, run remining against the project. Um, so we'll look at this inside of the demonstration as well, with what the process looks like to share a project with somebody. Now, one of the things we hear from many customers is how this new level of visibility in their organizations has increased collaboration amongst the relevant stakeholders. Uh, we were just on a call yesterday with the customer who was doing said they were, they were planning for a readout and they were they were saying hey you know what we've we've had such more so much more interaction with our business stakeholders than we've ever had in the past based on the new insights that we're able to share with them it it really is a it's a it's an interesting thing to watch in an organization how data drives that collaboration so while much of that collaboration is is via analysis being shared in PowerPoints and, and in meetings. There's a note creation capability as part of the solution to help enable collaboration among stakeholders in shared projects. Um, I, and I also learned about a pretty cool new capability uh, this week that I'm gonna share in the demonstration. It's when you kind of share these notes, you can take a snapshot and then when somebody opens it up, it can immediately go back to where they can choose to go directly to that view of the, the map that the, the person that shared it and added a note around it uh, provided. Now, another thing that's come up in customer conversations that is, that is related to these capabilities that I wanted to make sure I touched on is notifications. Um, there are some pre-built notifications that are packaged with the solution that fire when a mining job is completed or where someone mentions you in a note uh, as part of that collaboration feature we just spoke about. And, and these notifications can be found and edited in the system notifi notification section. So again, we'll, we'll look at that in the demonstration. Now, of course, with all this increased visibility, sharing and collaboration, we have to have some way to govern and control who and what people can see. Now, every organization is going to approach process optimization a little bit differently, and they're going to have probably different stakeholders involved. I put this slide in here just as a reference point for you to review afterwards. It's just a, just a reminder for those of you that this is your first time. Um, the deck and the recording are always posted to the community site in the process optimization product hub section. Uh, usually I get it out there a few hours after the call, depending on what my workload's like. So this deck will be posted. You can peruse this 
uh, slide at your leisure. But I did want to quickly run through the four roles that come when you activate the process optimization plugin. So uh, you're going to get a process optimization administrator role who can pretty much do everything from core configurations to accessing everything about individual projects themselves. And this role, uh, or this is the only role that can access the main process optimization properties and create templates to be used when someone does ad hoc mining from, let's say, a performance analytics uh, KPI in the analytics hub. Pretty much can do everything. Now, the process optimization power user role is real close to the admin role, has access to all projects, not just the ones that they create on their own. They can create and schedule jobs. They don't have access to the core properties or background scripts or templates, but pretty much everything that you would need on a day-to-day, -day, they can access. The process optimization analyst role gives somebody the ability to create and share their own projects and view, edit um, them as well. Uh, view and edit the projects that have been shared with them, I should say. And then, um, as you'll see in the demo, the person sharing the project with, let's say, an analyst can lock them down to a view only version. So even though an analyst might have the core rights to edit a project, if the person sharing it with them says, no, 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 you can only view this one, uh, that, that person sharing settings will take priority. And then finally, we have our viewer role, which pretty much does what it says, <laughs> it gives someone the right to view projects, but not create them. They can interact with the workbench and all the ways that you're familiar with, find insights, and then they can create notes to collaborate with others and create continual improvement initiatives or automation center requests if they have the appropriate roles for those applications um, on the platform. Now, I, I did want to touch on this uh, before we leave, we get to, to the instance itself. Very often when you have a roles conversation, people start thinking, whoa, 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 Do, are these roles chargeable? Is there some sort of license implication with these different roles? Um, and the answer to that question is no, process optimization is a percentage spend thing. So you can dole these roles out as much as you like with no worry from a, a licensing perspective once your organization is licensed for process optimization. All right, uh, let's jump on over into the instance and show you a couple of these things in action. Now I'm gonna come here and assuming I'm still logged in, I'm gonna impersonate my process optimization power user persona. So I'll come here, come in as a power user. And the first thing we'll do is we'll just look at some of the, the versioning uh, capabilities. All right, we'll go to our workspace process optimization workspace, and then we'll see one of the things you'll notice, and this is something that was new in Tokyo, you'll notice across the top here, when you get to the workspace, you have my projects. So these are the ones that in this case, my power user has created the projects that have been shared with you, as well as all of the projects that are available. I'm just going to come in here and open up this incident process review November project. And then in the upper right hand corner here, I'll just go to the analyst workbench real quick, you'll notice that I've got three different versions. Now, uh, I've set this up for the demo. You might be saying to yourself, well, you've got September, October, and November, Dan. You've got dates of all November. That's because I just relabeled them to kind of make the point for this demonstration. But I've got three different versions of this project. In real life, this might be something that you've scheduled to run in mine on a monthly basis, and this is how it would potentially show. Now, if we take this November version and we focus in on it, maybe I'm doing some analysis. I want to focus in on my email channel. I'll apply that. Then what I'd want to do is say, hey, let me compare that with last month and see if there's anything that has changed. So if I hit the compare button, I can come over here and I can open up last month's model and then apply the filters here and see if there was anything different. Again, demo data, not real life scenario. I'm not going to look very different here, but I can come in here and I can do this compare. And now as, as a user analyzing the data, maybe I see something out of whack or something interesting and I want to create a note. Um, and, and let somebody else know that I found something interesting in the data. I can come over here to the notes section and say, hey, at, um, let's say, PO demo analyst, take a look at the email impact over the last month. And then I can attach a snapshot of what I've done and hit post. And what that's going to do is that's going to send a notification 
off to my, my friend over there, my PO demo analyst, that there's something interesting that you should look at. That would show up, let's say I've got my email up over here. It might look like something like this. Again, these notifications completely customizable, um, but, and I'll show you where you would configure these or change these if you wanted to do the standard platform notification capability, but that's what it would look like um, in an inbox of some sort. Now, the other thing that I wanna show you here is I've got these three versions. I've got this option up here to edit those versions. So I can come in here and I mentioned earlier, you keep up to five versions or we by default keep up to five versions of a project. And there's a scheduled job that runs on a regular basis that cleans up um, things that are beyond the five, if you will. But if you've got something that you really like, like a, a model that's really important that shows something interesting, you can always come in here and edit that model and say, hey, I wanna turn the auto delete off and make sure that when that job runs that this, this one, it stays, it doesn't go anywhere. And you can also then customize the name of the project if you wanna do that here as well. And we'll just hit save. So now, whenever that job runs, even if this is kind of the outside of the five, it won't get deleted um, in that versioning. So that's how you can keep older versions of models that you think are interesting or highlight a certain thing that is really important to you. All right, now the next thing that we're gonna do here, we've looked at kind of comparing different versions of models that might've been scheduled over time, adding our notes. And now let's look at the sharing capability. And this has changed from San Diego to Tokyo. It's been updated to a little bit more or newer modal. So I have this ability to click on share and I can either add groups or users and only groups or users that have the process optimization roles will show up in this list. So here I get my list of either groups or users. I'm gonna choose my PO demo analyst user to share this product, project with. I'll add them. I mean, then here I've got the action. Remember I was talking about earlier, I can give them the rights to edit this. Um, and as a, a somebody with the analyst role, if I shared this with them, they would have the rights to edit this, but I'm gonna, just gonna give them the view only option here. So they won't be able to change anything and we'll hit confirm. And now I've shared that project with them. Well, let's go over to that analyst and just take a look at what they see now that they've got a project that's been shared with them. So I'll impersonate another user. I'll come over here to my demo analyst. I'll say impersonate. Now, the analyst, they're going to have no, if I remember correctly, no projects that they've created themselves. They haven't created a new project. They have the right to, but they haven't created any. So they're my projects page is, is blank. But they've got the shared and the all tabs. Now, this one's been shared with them. I just want to come in here real quick and I'll just show you this. I'm going to edit this project. And just so you can see, they're going to have no ability to, let's say, customize the project in any way. So let's say add an additional activity or change the filter criteria. So if I came down here to table configurations, you'll notice they don't have the new button here or project finding definitions. They can't add any finding definitions. And if I came all the way down to the table configuration itself for this model, you'll notice that they can't change the filter criteria. They can't add any activity definitions or breakdowns. So even though as an an, the analyst role dictates that they should be able to uh, edit projects that have been shared with them, when we use that view only option and share the project um, that removed their ability to do this. Now I can go and open this in the, the analyst workbench now. And what I wanna show you here is I'm gonna go view the notes that have been added to this project. So if we go to the notes section, we'll see that note that was added four minutes ago. It's like, hey, take a look at the email. Now you see this preview button? When I click this, what this is gonna do is it's gonna jump me to that view that was attached in that snapshot. So I can now see those side by side, November to October, and I can come in here and maybe I wanna look at the side by side comparison statistics of the models. I can do that right from here. Uh, maybe I wanna come in here and I say, you know what? I don't know. That's interesting to change from November to October, but now let's go back and let's look at September. So they can come in here and they can look at another historical version and do some comparisons of that. And then maybe they come in here and they put a note back to continue the collaboration and say, at PO, oops, sorry, at PO, let's see, demo power user. You think that is bad. Look at September. 
and they'll attach the snapshot and post that. And so that's gonna go back to them. Now, they found something interesting. They have access to, as uh, any one of the roles would have, to this improvement initiatives. And they want to make sure that this insight gets tracked, followed up on, prioritized. They can come in here and they can add a continual improvement initiative. But I've also got my integration with Automation Center. But as you'll see, this user does not have rights to Automation Center. So they do have rights to create continual improvement initiatives. They can do that. But they don't have rights to, to add automation ideas. So you'll see that although the panel is there, they don't have the right to create that uh, capability. And now let's end that impersonation. And last two things I want to show you is just kind of the interface for schedules and notifications. And I just looked at my watch. I was accurate in saying that this is going to be a little bit of a shorter session than those in the past, which I think some of you will be happy about. So let's just come over here and I'm going to go to my um, process optimization and I'm in as an admin this time. So we'll see that I've got my scheduled jobs and we can look at all jobs and just look at the one schedule that I've created here. Really straightforward, just like any other uh, scheduled job on the platform, you can add conditions to say, hey, when this job will fire. One of the use cases that I was thinking is that a, a project, a process optimization project does have settings of kind of like, hey, it's in draft, it's published, it's now, um, or it's, it's retired. You might have a condition to say only run this job if this project is in the published state um, or for when the job is in a published state. I've got this set as on demand now, but we've got all your standard scheduling options that you would have on the platform weekly, daily, monthly, periodically. I'm going to leave this as on demand for my demo purposes. And then you just start adding your project definitions. One thing to call out is that you would only, you should only have a, and it will only let you put a project can only live in a single schedule. You can't have a project scheduled more than once or in different schedules. Uh, so you've got this and you just simply add your projects to the list, set it and forget it. And then on a recurring basis, this stuff would mine and a notification would get sent to you whether the mining was successful or failed via email. Now, speaking of those notifications, let's jump on over to that. So if I go to notifications and these live in system notifications, I probably should have typed system notifications. And that would have been an easier way to get here. But if I go over to notifications, if you look at this, the category of process optimization, I've got four notifications in that category. So you've got the, hey, the data extraction was complete message that was be sent, training was successful, training failed. And then that notification in the email that I showed you, just to open that up, uh, you could then adjust this to, to any way that any way that you want, standard notification on the platform, right? When to send, who will receive, what it will contain, um, all available to you. That's it from a demonstration perspective. I'm gonna come back to the slides and just now open it up for questions. For those of you that are saying, Dan, you keep going to the very end and, and uh, we don't really have a time to ask questions today. I kept it short and sweet. Um, any questions about any of the stuff that we covered here today? Uh, you can come off mute or just put them in chat or the Q&A and happy to address them. Any questions above and beyond the content that we covered here today? Put it in the Q&A or the chat, yeah. Oh, here comes a question. It's a long question, so give me a second to process it. Uh, so, okay, so the question is, hey, process uh, for isn't ServiceNow pretty strict around the ways that uh, their out of the box workflows run, best practices? Um, why would you even need something like this um, solution where you, you you know like where there could be there, there shouldn't be an opportunity for there to be deviations and things that uh, go off course? Uh, it's it's an interesting point that you make there, but. If you think about 
processes in general, right? We designed them for both efficiency, but also completeness. Um, so things can go one, one route, right? And land in one place, but then maybe they need a, additional information from an end user. So there is a, a predetermined step that says, hey, we need to we need to go and kind of get additional information from the end user. And then once they get that information, it goes back to let's say a work in progress state or something like that. Even those types of things, we wanna get visibility into the scenarios where those things are happening because that's an opportunity to improve. If we can gather the right information up front in that scenario, we don't have as much back and forth and that's gonna save us time and increase productivity inside of the organization. Um, there are scenarios where people customize their workflows and do things a little bit out of the ordinary. Sometimes, even though we prescribe ways in which things should get assigned, they don't always get assigned to the right groups and there's some back and forth and ping ponging that goes on. So while every organization can do their best to follow best practices um, and have processes run as designed, there's always going to be things that follow non-conformant paths and, and deviate from the standard. Or even if things are following the standard, it helps to get visibility into opportunities in which we can improve the efficiency at each of the individual steps of that standard. Maybe it's by better educating folks or providing more information or improving again an intake experience. So yes, there are um, best practices and guidance for how works close for run, but any visibility into those, there's always going to be opportunities to, to improve and that's, that's where this helps. Looks like someone's saying their chat's disabled. John, I'll, I'll get, it's clearly your chat's not disabled because I, I can see this. So maybe you're just having the question and answers. Uh, got it. So question around availability in personal developer instances or sandbox. Um, unfortunately, process optimization is not available as part of personal developer instances because it does use the machine learning infrastructure with the, which those instances are not connected to. Um, so. Uh, we use the machine learning infrastructure to do the heavy duty number crunching to ensure that process optimization doesn't have an impact on the performance of a customer's instance. Um, so from a product design perspective, there's a huge benefit to using that from a somebody who's playing with process optimization or wants to play in a personal development instance. Unfortunately, there's not an option. Um, customers are typically playing with this in a uh, sub-production instance right now in which they have the rights to turn it on, use it and mine up to 4,000 records. Uh, so question around, hey, the notes looks fantastic. Is there possible to see the narrative associated with a given project all in one place and be able to highlight and annotate after the initial? So uh, that's where the versioning comes in, John. Um, all the notes associated with a given version of a project will be available there. Um, and then kind of how right now, how we bring everything together in a single place is if there's a an opportunity to improve, we would urge the customer to create a continual improvement record. That continual improvement record kind of acts as the hub or the continual improvement initiative, I think the record is called. It acts as a hub. Um, so it one will have a link going back to the version of the project, which would contain the workspace that you saw in its state with the notes that are there. It would also though, that record contains the KPIs that you think will be impacted by the initiative uh, that this this improvement will uh, be focused on. It also gives you the right to create change requests, projects, ideas, demands. So all of the stuff around kind of, hey, we found an insight in process optimization gets logged in that continual improvement initiative, as well as the actions that we need to take to improve and act on the insight, as well as the KPIs that kind of help us communicate the impact of us acting on that are all bundled into, or all can be bundled, I should say, into a continual improvement record. So that would be the one place right now. I will say, and then remember the safe harbor, there have been a few asks from customers to say, hey, I would love to have like a, an auto-generate PowerPoint of this analysis that I did, because most people, as much as we urge them to use live dashboards and process optimization, work spaces to drive their meetings. Most people are still running their meetings with PowerPoint presentations. Um, it comes with some challenges because if somebody asks a question about what they see in the PowerPoint, there's no ability to drill down and follow up on those questions, but that's a different session. Um, so there has been asked to kind of generate a visual that might encapsulate all of the information in one place, John. Uh, it's something that we're, we're exploring from a product perspective. 
Any other questions, comments, thoughts, things you want to share? Awesome. So we'll just do a couple of other quick housekeeping items here. Uh, one, for those of you that this is your first time and you've not kind of started with process optimization, what do you do next? Well, uh, you could go back and watch all nine other Academy sessions or simpler, uh, there is a now learning course um, that's about 90 minutes self-paced uh, called Process Optimization Essentials. I would highly recommend that you take that course. Then you also have the rights to activate the plugins on a sub-production instance and try this out. So uh, there's really two plugins that you're going to want to activate. One is the main process optimization plugin that gets you the capability. And then for each of the individual workflows that we support, whether it be ITSM, CSM, HR, or App Engine. Actually, App Engine doesn't have a content pack. For those, those three workflows, we have content packs uh, that help jumpstart you um, on your process mining journey with those workflows. So it gives you some finding definitions, some configurations out of the box. So you, all you really have to do is hit mine on that first project and you'll have a visualization in, in a matter of minutes. So take the now learning course, activate the plugins, away you go, contact your, your solution consulting team or your sales team and your partners. Uh, if you have any questions, or you can always reach out to me or post on the community. In terms of other resources that are available to you beyond uh, these academy sessions that we're, we're on today, uh, one is that training course that I mentioned. There is a really good now on now white paper out there that details our journey. I talked a little bit about how we're, we're using process optimization here at ServiceNow. Uh, this white paper goes into more details. It actually highlights um, five specific workflows that we've applied this to and some of the findings and the outcomes that we've achieved. Uh, we've applied process optimization to something over, like over 40 different workflows at this point internally here at ServiceNow, but this details five of those. There's a really good um, Forbes article out there uh, written by our uh, chief analytics officer, uh, VJ Kotu, who is super passionate and a big believer in process mining. If you've not heard him speak about it, it's worth it if you're a process mining type person. We've got the community forum, which is likely, I hope, how you found this Academy session in the first place. But if you just stumbled upon it's in a different place, if you go to the process, uh, sorry, ServiceNow community, there is a process optimization product hub that has a ton of information. It's also a good place to post. I check every day for questions posted by customers to see how we could uh, help you move forward. There was three knowledge sessions at K22. They've all been recorded and, and posted. And one of them was by that gentleman, VJ Kotu, that I mentioned, worth checking out. That's also available on the community site. And then um, while these Academy sessions are great, there is another recording out there uh, from a live on now perspective called Getting Started with ServiceNow's in-platform process mining. It contains everything you need to know to get started and get your first visualized process map up and running. A um, little bit of a 101, a quick demonstration of the solution in action, how you kind of download the plugins or turn on the plugins or which ones you need to turn on, as well as kind of how you walk through the steps to build your first model and mine, all available in that one session. So certainly check that out. Last chance for romance, last chance for questions. Let's check um, another question coming in. Yeah, so a good question is, hey, is there anything that helps guide the user um, or anyone using the solution to what their next action should be? Um, so yes, there is there's certain parts of the solution that help guide uh, to the next best action. Um, one of them is something we call insights cards that come as part of those content packs. Uh, so we continue to maintain a library of common inefficiencies within the workflows on the platform. We provide those as part of the content pack. So as somebody minds, uh, we call out those inefficiencies and kind of say, hey, here's where you should, should be starting and what you should do next. There's also a portion of the solution, and actually it's something that we covered in the last Academy session. If you, if you did not attend, it's worth going back and watch. Uh, something in the solution is called automation discovery. Um, and what automation discovery does is it takes the data that we've mined, it runs it through some machine learning capability uh, solutions uh, and a, a pre-built taxonomy of automation opportunities. And then it says, hey, 12% of these 30,000 incidents that you just mined, they would be a likely candidate for this type of automation. Um, and oh, by the way, we also have an out of the box virtual agent conversation uh, that will help you kind of deflect or uh, provide a self-service option for this. So there's a, a number of different ways within the solution that actually help guide the person using it to their next best action, if you will, or a solution to optimize things.
just looking any other questions coming in um, as you get your your questions uh teed up or your last question teed up just a reminder this is going to be our last session this year um really appreciate those of you that attend on a regular basis and those that are attending just for the first time it's i've had a lot of fun delivering the sessions i look forward to a little break but uh super excited to get started i think the next session i have it on one of the slides here will be um second week of january third week of january um give me some time to come up with some new content also give you some time to post your questions in the community and make some suggestions in terms of uh content uh that we will uh, provide or content you'd like to see us cover moving forward. All right. As I just mentioned, look at that next slide. Um, taking our break. Again, this session, these sessions are on the schedule. They keep getting pushed back because people keep asking specifically um, for topics like the one that we had here today. But I, we plan on starting back up on January 13th. We'll look at the request process. At least that's the plan, but you've got plenty of time to get a different topic on the agenda if you, you post to the community. Um, so with that, I'll just say uh, have a great holiday season, a happy new year, and uh, look forward to, to uh, connecting with all of you again in, in 2023. Thanks.